18th of July 2023 until the 11th of January 2025, the karmic nodes of the moon are going to shift from Taurus and Scorpio into Aries and Libra. This is divine masculine, divine feminine energy. Aries is ruled by Mars, the god of war and masculinity, and Libra is ruled by Venus, the goddess of pleasure, beauty and love. What is this transit going to bring about in your personal circumstances, but also more widely on a collective level? Let's explore. Hey crew, I'm Lexi, your local light worker. Follow me on TikTok, follow me on Instagram. Feel free to become my patron as well for exclusive astrological content. Thank you so much for being here. I'm happy that the algorithm somehow brought you to my channel. In this clip today, I'm going to break down the significance in your personal lives, the transit of the North Node in Aries and the South Node in Libra. First of all, a brief word regarding the North Node and the South Nodes of the Moon. The Nodes of the Moon are not actually planets or stars you can't really find them on the sky. They are imaginary points that the moon creates in its movement around the earth. It creates this North Pole, South Pole elliptic, which apparently it has been hypothesized by a lot of astrologers and occult teachers that the movement of the moon, the moon representing unconscious collective material, our past memories and all sorts of hidden archetypes within our shadow selves. Well, when the moon does this movement, it apparently brings up a karmic cycle. So the North and the South Node of the Moon have been created by astrologers in order to help us understand karmic cycles. All of a sudden, the collective energy shifts from one interest to another. Why are we so obsessed with religious themes in the year 2022? And then in the year 2023, we're all obsessed with gathering wealth. Well, the North Nodes of the Moon have something to do with that. And I just used the previous examples just as a roadmap. They, they don't really represent the energies that we were collectively obsessed with. That's just as an example to show you how this energy works. You will also find different interpretations of the north and the south node of the moon depending on what type of astrologer you will talk with. If you go for a birth chart reading and you get it done by a western astrologer, you will get a more positive interpretation of the north node rather than if you get it from a Vedic astrologer who will be a bit more cautious in attributing the north node certain positive characteristics. Well, this is because interpreting the north node and the south node of the moon is culturally biased. It depends on the culture into which you are born, for example, more collectivist cultures such as the ones in Asia and eastern part of the globe, they tend to prioritize strong bonds between community members and, for example, ideals such as filial piety. While us in the western part of the world, and I say that because I am a western astrologer as well, we tend to prioritize values such as independence and achieving your career and professional goals and living separately from other members of the community while also politically and socially contributing to the betterment of society. So it tends to be a more detached perspective and we tend to kind of value the North Node because it shows us our point of growth rather than for Vedic astrologers, it could show a point of ruin. So keep that in mind as I explain some of these aspects. There is a difference between Western and Vedic astrology. Now, ancient astrologers, to help us understand the cycles of karma that are released, have given us a symbolic feature to focus on. And this feature is the dragon. The symbol of the dragon is stemming from another previous symbol that has been with us since the dawn of mankind, and that has been the Uroburos, the dragon, the cosmic dragon that eats its own tail and represents infinity and the cycles of life, death, and rebirth. So based upon the image of the Uroburos, we now have the karmic nodal dragon. And you can see in this image over here how the north node is associated with the head of the dragon and the south node with the tail of the dragon. So it is hypothesized that whatever the North Node is bringing into our lives, the head of the dragon kind of munches very ferociously towards that. So we tend to become quite obsessed with the energy and the astrological sign in which we have a particular North Node placement. We are born with a specific North Node placement in our chart and make sure that you have a look at which one is yours. But we also have the nodes shifting once every 18 months for our our entire collective energies, bringing up new obsessions to the collective surface. For example, at the moment, I'm filming this when we have a North Node in Taurus, 
and a south node in Scorpio. Concerns about money, wealth, and creating stability in an ever-increasing chaotic social and political environment are at the forefront of the collective at the moment. How stable is my job going to be? How much money do I have? Can I actually save a lot of money in the bank? Will my family be okay? Will we have enough food to put on the table as the prices are rising due to increased chaos, war, conflict all over the world? So we're needing to let go of things related to the south node in Scorpio, which talks about letting go of chaos, letting go of emotional intensity, darkness, deprivation, emotional poverty as well, and just prioritizing death, destruction, and annihilation. And what we are all collectively obsessed with on the foreground of all these things happening is stability, light, harmonious interactions with each other, increasing trade routes, maintaining the access to food and fresh water and all sorts of products and objects that create our material sense of safety and stability. That is the North Node in Taurus. What is going to happen this summer, in the summer of 2023 when I'm filming this, you might actually see this video a little bit later on. On the 18th of July, we are going to have a shift. All of a sudden, the collective obsessions are going to change and they are going to move from Taurus into Aries and from the south node in Scorpio we will see a move to the south node in Libra. Why is that? Well it's because the nodes are traveling backwards as they represent karmic cycles it's kind of like we take a step backwards in order to relive certain themes from the past. This means that from the 18th of July we will be obsessed with Mars-like energy and we will have to let go Libra related aspects. So that would be things related to beauty, relationships, love. The thing is that these nodes don't really function in separation from another. This is a very flawed opinion out there that some astrologers have put forth that you can kind of separate the two, but they work together. We need the contents of the south node to kind of create a background upon which the obsessive collective energy of the north node will play out. Out. So much like at the moment, on the background of scorpionic energy, darkness, increased mistrust, binds that are broken because people don't understand one another, because there is a lot of wounding in the collective, there is a lot of intense emotionality due to war and conflict and chaos. On that background, we are striving towards material stability, safety, Taurus energies. In a similar fashion, in the next 18 months, starting from the 18th of July, we will be on the background of increasing relational harmony, negotiations and political maybe dissent or debates, better said, we will be obsessed with how am I fitting into this big picture? How can I step into my role as a hero or the heroine in my specific circumstances? What is up to me? What can I do on my own to change my own circumstances? In which direction should I start something new that could potentially help not only me, but everyone else? So it's the pioneering energy of Aries that will come up to the forefront. It's that hero energy of, I can do it, leave it up to me. I know in which direction we should go. I can lead you all towards salvation, a better world, something much better than what we were promised in the past. So we will also see some reforms regarding laws and regulations. This is going to be very interesting because Saturn and Pisces will be placing these nodes in a bit of an uncomfortable energy. There's going to be a semi-sextile and a square to the North Node in Aries and to the South Node in Libra. So rules and regulations are going to be established and then broken or there will be some flaws in the rules and regulations and the taxation potentially that will come up in the coming period which will increasingly produce some rage on a personal level. The North Node in Aries has the following qualities. It is the energy of courage, confidence and creativity. If you can take this energy and create something new, you are using this energy for something wonderful. You are using it at its best, at its zenith, in the highest vibration you can possibly be using it. But the downside of a North Node in Aries brings with it the following problems, violence, selfishness, and pettiness. 
So there will be a lot of arguments and problems if this energy is not used well. We are going to see an obsessive need for people to reinstate masculinist patriarchal values in the forefront of a societal disintegration. And paradoxically, we need the societal disintegration. We need for things to change. We've been needing change for such a long time, but change that should happen in a positive way, not with so much violence and conflict. We'll see if this is going to play out in a more noble way in the corresponding 18 months, but I just want you to be informed and forewarned that there could be a mix between these two energies, high vibrational Aries energy, bringing the charisma to the table, bringing the creativity and the fun and the excitement to begin something new, while low vibrational Aries energy is going to play out in a collective shadow in which we might strike out impulsively, we might behave in a really erratic way. It's fire energy, so it's hard to predict, it's hard to control. We might not know exactly what happens, especially since some people will be more negatively affected by this transit, while others are going to come into their own. Now, the qualities of the South Node in Libra speak about beauty, intelligence, and fairness. Libra is the judge of the zodiac. It is the person that can listen to both competing opinions and draw a really objective conclusion. This is the energy of the negotiator, the person that finds mutually benefic compromises in whatever quarrel. Libra is also the energy of looking pretty, maintaining proportions. It is the energy of symmetry, balance, and non-reactivity. It is a calm energy, an emotionally cool one that is more passive and receptive rather than outgoing and full of excitement. So the beautiful qualities of Libra are going to be our comfort zone in the next 18 months. We will feel the need to retreat into beauty, to find some way to make it fair for everyone around us. We would want to sit back and analyze what exactly is happening and look into codes of laws and regulations to try to come up with a solution to the chaos around us. However, if we spend too much time in this comfort zone, we will bring up the shadow aspects of the South Node and Libra. And these talk about indolence, passivity to an extreme, codependency. And then finally, there's the moral upper hand, that self-righteous behavior that might make us say, well, everything is awful, people are stupid, nobody understands anything, so why should I bother? I'd rather just spend the rest of my time engaging in pleasures and excesses and not really doing my best to contribute in any meaningful way to the betterment of the situation around me because nobody understands my high superior intelligence. There will be a tendency to analyze and hide behind laws rather than to courageously push forward and take a step, take a stand, speak your truth, stand your ground, in spite of the fact that you might encounter some very heavy opposition. Within these two energies, 18 months, we are going to be flooded with these two themes and we're going to see these energies play out in a variety of ways, both on a social level, environmental, political. We are going to have these energies play out in our personal lives as well. And now here at this part of the video, I want to talk a little bit about your nodal return and your reverse nodal return, because these are going to be the people that will be most affected by this transit. So overall, astrologically speaking, the signs that are ruled by Mars and the signs that are ruled by Venus are going to be the ones that will be the most challenged, but also the ones that will appear to the forefront of the collective. A lot of attention is going to be placed on people that are Venus ruled, so Libras and Taurians and people that are Mars ruled, so Aries and Scorpios. Why am I saying Scorpios? Because if you guys remember in traditional astrology, before Pluto was discovered, Mars was the co-ruler of Scorpio. Aries is light Mars, solar Mars, while Scorpio represents the darker aspect of Mars, the more healing, intuitive, spiritual aspects of Mars. So Scorpios, Aries, Libras, and Taurus individuals are going to be the most affected in the next 18 months. What happens when you were born with the North Node in Aries or with the reverse nodes? So with a South Node in Aries, a North Node in Libra. This is going to be a game changer 18 months for you. I was born with this energy as well, North Node in Aries, South Node in Libra, and my life has all been 
surrendered to these two themes of beauty, intelligence, passivity, and feeling comfortable with intelligent themes, with just sitting and talking about aspects rather than going out and doing them. I always felt the need inside of myself to push myself, to be brave, to go and do something, to stop thinking about things, to stop doubting and just do it. My comfort zone in the first part of my life were always relationships. I was flooded by people left and right, but this led to a sense of diluted identity. So in order to truly understand who I am, I had to spend time alone. And I saw the period that was created by the pandemic and then by the war in Ukraine as a really important spiritual step forward for me to isolate myself from the previous relationships that were defining my life and to truly find my voice. And I created this space here. So by taking time to be on your own, by removing social distractions and the opinions of other people and kind of putting your relationships on pause, you are able to truly figure out who you are, what you want, and what you need to do to move forward in your life. These are the important challenges of a North Node in Aries. You will be very tempted when you come across a conflict when you come across a situation where you need to defend yourself and prove your strength and your willpower, you will be tempted to get other people to help you, to fall back on other relationships or to hide behind rules and regulations. But it's important for you to actually exercise strength of character, to show people that nobody can mess with you, to show that you have the courage to look at fear in its face and not back down. You are determined and you will resist and you will prove to everyone around you that you will not be a pushover. The whole problem with being a doormat, the pushover, the whole problem with how do we integrate our need to be independent, to express ourselves without destroying our personal connections, without completely alienating ourselves from other people. These are going to be some of the core themes that we will all be collectively focused on, but especially these themes will be brought up to the fore for those of you who will be having your nodal return. When you have a north node in Aries and a south node in Libra, you are pushed on your destined path. Your growth zone is embodying courage, doing something creative, going your own way, becoming your own boss, starting something new and run the risk of being ridiculed by other people. But who knows, maybe a couple of maybe days, months or years down the line, people will come back to you and tell you, wow, that idea that you had and you put it into practice with so much courage. Now I can see what a pioneering thought that was. If you have a North Node in Aries, try to detach as much as possible from other people's opinions. You will be pushed towards this energy in the next 18 months. There's no escaping it. This is your moment to walk your destiny. This is the moment to embody those three characteristics that I mentioned earlier. The most important one being confidence. Having the confidence to live your life on your own terms and not being such a people-pleasing person. You are a very beautiful, a very attractive individual. You know how to express yourself with refinement and eloquence, but these are qualities that you've already played out and embodied in a previous lifetime. In this lifetime, you need to kind of get rough and dirty, and you need to kind of like stand up and defend yourself. You need to take a stand. You need to take a side. Pick a side, North Node and Aries. Pick a side. And when I say this to you, I say this to myself because I'm always kind of like in between two things being able to see both sides of a situation but in the next 18 months we will be pushed towards these themes and we will need to embody courage and show determination and stand by what we believe in and also love people that we generally feel attracted to not people that look good with us on paper or on social media so your relationships are going to be a point of test Are you going to go for that person that makes you truly happy and kind of excites you? Or are you just going to take a step back and conform to what your parents, your community want you to be with? I mean, this is a really important point of growth and I want you guys to see it as such. The important thing you need to remember is that, yes, the next six months are not going to be so comfortable to embody this energy. Pluto and Capricorn is going to create a loose square to this energy. So there might be some clashes with institutions, with traditional authorities, with 
things as they are with the status quo. But from next year, we are going to have Pluto returning to Aquarius and we are going to have Jupiter in Gemini. This is information processing overload. This is going to be basically a new era where your pioneering spirit will be more sought after than anything else you have to give to the collective. So bear with these six months of adjustment. You are really going to take off and the work that you do is really going to take off starting from next year after January. So what happens if you have the reverse nodes? So for example, you have a south node in Aries and a north node in Libra. Well, your destiny is actually related to those beautiful qualities I mentioned earlier related to the south node in Libra, fairness, intelligence, beauty, harmony. You are brought into this incarnation to be less of a loner and more of a people person. You're brought into this incarnation to sit back, negotiate, be a bit more calm, more emotionally cool, not such a hothead. This is the energy of learning to kind of doubt your instincts and trust more your reason, your logic, your capacity to be cool in a tense situation and not just fly off the handle or go back into your comfort zone, which is being a loner, being a leader, but being solitary. So as the North Node is moving on your South Node, you are going to be having a bit of an uncomfortable couple of 18 months. I'm not going to lie. It will feel really weird. A lot of people from your past are going to be important to developing some of the things connected to your North Node, but there will be frustration and friction. It's kind of like your growth zone will be your comfort zone and your comfort zone is going to become your growth zone. So you will be a little bit confused by this energy. Why is this happening? Well, it's mostly to help you understand the necessity for you to work towards things connected to your destiny. Out of frustration, you are going to learn how to negotiate with other people. You're going to learn the value of compromise. Out of situations of conflict and tension, you are going to take a step back and learn to cool off. You are going to actually learn how to take better care of yourself, indulge in beauty treatments, and try to bring more peace into your life. You might resort to culture as a means to calm yourself down and to find a way to deal with the frustration you might be feeling related to not being able to fulfill your destiny and being pushed into a comfort zone that doesn't feel really comfortable. I hope this makes sense. It's a really tricky karmic energy. A lot of people from the past are going to appear and they are going to help you do some things in the present that will push you forward onto your destiny. But you might just find that you tend to be caught up in a loop with them, in a repetitive pattern. And that will be another point of frustration. The good news is that this transit lasts only 18 months. You have the beginning date, 18th of July, and the end date, 11th of January of 2025. Much like what I mentioned for the North Node in Aries, people, you are going to have better energy coming to you from next year. Now, the tensions that will be felt on a collective level between individuality and being part of a collective and doing what is right by other people but compromising your identity, all of these things are going to create this friction, this tension, this frustration, which might erupt next year in a number of social protests. So political themes are unionizing, coming together into groups, establishing new rules of law are going to be so important. You will see many more leaders coming up to the fore. And because we have this masculine and feminine energy that is kind of opposing one another, you will see more issues related to the abuse of men and the persecution of women, also how women might have been abusing other men. There will be a lot of problems related to gender ideology, gender norms, and how can we bring about more gender equality. Another interesting thing that I want to briefly mention towards the end of this clip is that our planet is actually surrounded by these two luminaries. We have Mars and Venus as the two planets planets that are closest to us. So you could say that a lot of the things that happen here on Earth 
are under the influence not only of the moon that is bringing about collective energies and emotional patterns and it's really actually affecting our tides and a lot of our agrarian cycles and well for women especially it's also affecting the timing of our menstruation from time to time but we also have the energy of the divine feminine and the divine masculine in the skies nearby themes related to how are we masculinizing our environment and how can we feminize it these themes are going to come up to the forefront could we just be a bit less aggressive with pesticides could we maybe find ways in which we can design structures in the cities that have more feminine shape more roundness to them rather than square corners so such issues will come to the forefront regarding the environment as well not only our personal connections final thing i need to say is that love and how you are independently working to achieve it will be the big theme on our minds can i combine my independent lifestyle with a connection what are the compromises that i need to make can i also achieve a work and life balance will i be able to achieve my goals versus also please my partner and give them some quality time and spend time listening to them and getting to know them these are going to be some big aspects in the next 18 months so we will all have this collective food for thought playing out in our individual circumstances this is all i had for you i hope you have enjoyed this clip make sure to get in touch with me if you would like a birth chart reading or a transit report i also offer a love asteroids report i am a certified astrologer and i'd be happy to work with you and help you untangle the true meaning of your north node and south node placements thank you so much for listening thank you for your support have a wonderful rest of the day Mwah.